The Tomb Raider franchise received a reboot and I skipped on that. I had too many other games lying around. Well, four years later a good buddy of mine gifted the game to me on Steam. You know who you are. Thank you very much. The story starts off with a bunch of people looking to find Yamatai. In this group of people are Grimm, the old man of the sea, the mentor Roth, aspiring archaeologist Lara Croft, her best friend Sam, a big dude, a black woman, a TV adventurer and a nerdy dude. Suddenly a storm appears and the ship wrecks, causing the group to be separated and stranded on an island. Laura eventually meets up with Sam and a clearly not suspicious man named Matthias. Laura loses consciousness for whatever reason, wakes up and the two are gone. Then she finds some of her other friends suddenly within two minutes. The group splits and Laura goes to find Roth, jumping around like a bunny with a gaping stomach wound and a leg she wouldn't be able to use thanks to the fucking bear trap she just stepped in. The story as a whole is not really good. There's basically no creativity found here as every story aspect, every story twist and every bad cliche in Hollywood movies was just taken and implemented here. Only sometimes better and usually worse. Just look at the characters. Sam is the damsel in distress and Laura is our protagonist. Laura is a very stubborn person who got into her party phase thanks to Sam. Laura studies a lot and is supposedly very intelligent as she is the one who brings up the accurate location of Yamatai. Lara is a frustrating protagonist and as any other Tomb Raider games etc are obsolete in a reboot, I don't really know a lot about her. Did Lara receive training or does she work somewhere where she can hone her shooting skills to the point of her immediately knowing how to use every weapon she touches perfectly, which kinda goes against her entire character arc of growing into the role of a survivor? Other times she's just short-sighted or outright stupid. Lara as a person is not explored enough and she constantly does things within the plot that would contradict how the game sets her up. It's not just that the gameplay and the story bite each other and create plot holes, but also because the story writing in of itself creates plot holes without a lot of afterthought to anything. For example, Lara falls at the beginning, by the way you better get used to Lara falling, and her body is pierced. I don't have to be a doctor to be sure that this injury is nothing left to be untreated. It matters for the tutorial and after that, Lara never cares for that. Actually nobody cares about that. She meets her comrades and old friends constantly throughout the game and nobody gives a shit about it. However it matters later in the game, literally hours later near the end game and Lara starts treating it. Although it's unlikely it will repair all the organ damage. This entire wound has no point in being in the game. It never matters in the story or gameplay. I don't even want to count how many inconsistencies were created by adding a freaking radio into the mix. <laughs> the game is full of that and almost every second or third gameplay sequence or cutscene has inconsistencies or plot holes. All these problems extend to the gameplay. There are so many unneeded cutscenes in the gameplay that would have made absolutely no difference by just leaving them out. The game doesn't even let you freely choose whether you run, walk or sneak, which takes you even more out of the game. Immersion is unlikely if you pay attention to the story and question anything in the game. Also some gameplay sections are just ridiculous and fail in every aspect at whatever they wanted to do. Like here. Keep in mind that Laura comments on everything in the game. Why did he go? Yes Laura, where did he go? Surely not through the only f***ing way. But here she doesn't mention anything. It's not like the game tells you anything about it or even gives you an explanation for why these men are hanging there to begin with. It's hard to immerse yourself in a world that was designed by Michael Bay, judging by the amount of explosions and the feeling of absolute non-pressure in the action sequences. Let's talk about the actual game. You jump around and shoot people. Sometimes you can do optional tombs with easy as balls puzzles that don't make a lot of sense. First things first. Everything you learn in a tutorial doesn't really matter, as the game keeps sending you wrong signals for what you can actually do throughout the game. 
like not being able to climb because you're not allowed to, the game telling you everything you need to do, and thus giving you a feeling that they don't want you to explore at all. Further supported by the lazy item placement, at some points you're allowed to manually activate your torch, but usually the game does it automatically. Way too many reminders that you have an atrocious game mechanic that shows you every objective and everything to collect, but not telling you how to get off ropes. No wait, sorry, the game does tell you how to get off ropes. Eight hours into the game when you already had to do it too many times. It's just a shame. Because I did really enjoy two areas in the game and I like how Lara controls in platforming. When my controls aren't bugging out anyway. This was the only point in the entire game where I felt like I was in control. You might argue, but you have control in combat, don't you? Sort of yes. Lara can take a lot of damage and is perfectly capable of dealing with all enemies in the game without any upgrades at all. Keep in mind that there are also only 4 weapons in the game, which basically only differ in firing rate and recoil. Every headshot kills and ammunition is not even worth mentioning as there are literally crates of ammunition and dozens of arrows at every f***ing corner in the game. The level design just adds to the monotone experience as it's basically a turret shooter for most of the game. And guess how they decided to increase the difficulty in this game? First by introducing grenades around halfway through the game and then by simply throwing more enemies at you, which are a joke due to their level design. After that, they just throw more and more at you. The later levels have a bit better level design and to be honest, the last hour in this game was just better than the entire experience. But that doesn't mean that I would suggest you to play a game only for the last hour. The game suffers from several annoying design decisions and inconsistency is a big issue. It's fine if you play this game in chunks and you can enjoy it if you don't think about anything in the game itself. But matter of the fact is, this game is inconsistent, it's riddled with plot holes and the gameplay is lackluster. There are some good moments though and you can constantly see automatic sections that would actually make for some good atmospheric gameplay if we were allowed to be in control but that doesn't happen. Also the action events are... they aid the feeling of taking control away. They are gameplay wise just annoying as it further drags out the game. Of course there's much more like the invisible walls, constantly annoying button mashing, action events and stupid shit seen coming from a mile away with literally no surprises ever in the game. Everything happens exactly like you think, bad dungeon design, giving you too many hints eliminating any curiosity, the game being really inflexible with your freedom, controls glitching out, the shift button which is both dodging and getting off ropes is bugged on PC, way too many action sequences that are almost all without meaning or substance, scripted events going wrong again and again and again and again and again. Character model glitches, one of the most unneeded map systems in video games, shaky cam that takes you out of the experience even more and I could go on for another 3 minutes about what this game fails at. The music is just orchestral stuff that is fitting but it's just there not doing much of anything. What I can praise is the voice acting with the best one, in my opinion, being Whitman of all people. Keep in mind though that everyone does a really good job. The visuals… okay you have some awesome views of the landscape and usually the graphics look acceptable enough, although going for a purely realistic style will let the game age much quicker. Tomb Raider is a game specifically designed for a very specific group of people. The kind of people that need something to play in between of something else. The kind of people that enjoy just an hour or so of playtime per day and the kind of people that don't try to analyze a game while playing it. Like when they had a rough day and need to relax. If you're one of these people, then this game is for you. This game is also simple enough to recommend to people with no or barely any experience in gaming. But I really can't recommend this game to anyone who expects anything more than what this game actually is. 
This game is a very, very bland and simple third-person shooter. But it's way too simple and the story is a mess. If you decide to play this game, then play this game in chunks and not for too long per day. Otherwise the monotony will become really apparent. It's not a bad game. And there are things that were definitely worth the effort like the voice acting. But those are the exceptions.